older term for polycystic ovary syndrome is Stein-Leventhal syndrome, and this affects 3 to 15 percent of women of reproductive age, and in the UK and US, between 5 and 10 percent of women. Symptoms include irregular or absent periods, infertility, and this is the most common cause of infertility, hirsutism where the face, chin and body become rather hairy, but conversely the scalp may become rather less hairy with male pattern hair loss. Other symptoms include obesity, oily skin and acne. So how do you know if someone has polycystic ovary syndrome? There are a number of diagnostic criteria that have been published. The best known is probably the Rotterdam Diagnostic Criteria and for this to make a diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome two of the three of the following are required. The first being oligo or anovulation, second excess androgens and third polycystic ovaries. So as you can see the presence of polycystic ovaries does not necessarily indicate a diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome and also the presence of polycystic ovaries is not necessarily a requirement for the diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome. Causes of polycystic ovary syndrome include insulin resistance and excess insulin production, obesity and excess androgen production. In addition, polycystic ovary syndrome is in some cases hereditary. There are many complications of polycystic ovary syndrome, including infertility, premature birth and miscarriage, diabetes, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia and cardiovascular disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, acanthosis nigricans, depression and anxiety. Another local potentially serious complication of polycystic ovary syndrome is endometrial hyperplasia where the endometrium becomes thickened and eventual development of endometrial carcinoma. This is a gross specimen of a polycystic ovary. You can see that there are multiple subcortical cysts. Beneath it is the uterus and the white area is an endometrial carcinoma that has developed as a complication of polycystic ovary syndrome. So polycystic ovaries in polycystic ovary syndrome are enlarged to around twice the size of normal and they contain multiple subcortical follicle cysts one half to 1.5 centimeters across. The superficial cortex is thickened and fibrotic and there is a thin layer of granulosa cells lining the cysts and around the layer of granulosa cells is a thick layer of luteinized theca interna cells. Here is a low power histological section of a polycystic ovary with superficial cortical cysts. Here you can see that the cortex is rather fibrotic. And here is the lining of a follicle cyst. You can see the thin layer of granulosa cells on the inner aspect and a thickened layer of luteinized theca interna cells. And just out of interest, here is the endometrial adenocarcinoma that was accompanied by the polycystic ovary that you have just seen.